Okay, I'm just doing a quick test on the EGR valve and uh, just using this uh, vacuum pump that works. Um, and just disconnect this line from this line right here and it's not holding a vacuum. It should hold a vacuum. It's not. I can hear it working inside. Let's see, I can't. Yeah, so this is working. That's not working. It could be a reason why his, uh, his fuel mileage is wonky. So, um, it's really early in the morning. It's like 40 degrees out here. Um, those things are super expensive. So I'm gonna um, take that apart later. See if I can clean it or get it to work again. I don't know what's wrong with it. I did see the, I did see that little shaft moving up and down when I was doing that, but it's supposed to hold a vacuum from from my research. Okay. For those that are interested, you see, you can uh, get these. Uh, these have got the double pipe though. Mine is just a single pipe. $661. Here's another one I found in stock, $730. 93, 380. So if you go to a junkyard and you see one of these on one of these <laughs> Mercedes W124s, it fits about, I think about four different model Mercedes from that era. But snag that puppy, man. You can make yourself some money. Jeez. Looking looking at eBay. Eight hundred and six dollars for this part. That's the one. Why? Okay, so next day I got the uh, EGR valve out. This is what it looks like. And this one, being it's a 1992 300E M103, it only has uh, this one connection for the for the pipe for the um, exhaust gases or whatever it is. Um, I've got this on. Just double checking. does pump up but it does not hold so I don't know if we can see it here uh, how's that can we see so there's a little so it does move I thought it might have been frozen um, I don't know, it's not holding, holding the vacuum, but I've been reading all kinds of things, you know, um, all kinds of opinions and things like that. And, um, the reason these are so expensive is because they don't make them anymore. You know, all the sites I, I went to. Um, you know, they're five, six, seven, eight hundred dollars, and you look at it and it says out of stock. So, um, you'll find used ones on eBay, but they're pretty, some of them are pretty high priced too. What would be nice is, I mean, something like this for, say, like a 1992 Ford EGR valve, it's like twenty nine dollars. <laughs> 
you know, they kind of look the same. They've got, uh, they have this little top hat here and it has three, it looks like bolts. There's three of those that hold this onto there. And then I'd like to know what's on the other end of this sh shaft that goes up and down. I'd like to be able to maybe take that apart. I don't know why. And then there's this part here. So this is, I don't know, it's doing something where it's opening it up and allowing, uh, I don't know if it's air or what, but... At least the thing moves. Um, then looking on Ben's world, at a, um, you know, there's a million posts on the EGR valves and my car wouldn't pass emissions because of this, you know, and, um, and even those guys were going, I think it's so darn expensive. <laughs> Some people do bypass where they just block it, block it off, you know. Um, especially the the diesel ones of these, or the these years of Mercedes where they were diesel. It's it's all over YouTube. It's uh, EGR delete, you know, on a diesel Mercedes. I guess the diesel ones, all this stuff just gets really sooty and clogged up, and probably makes the engine run crummy. Um, this is just basically carbon. So, working on fuel mileage, I did get a uh, a new O2 sensor. Um, and some sites for the original one, it's like between eighty and one hundred and fifty-six dollars. Um, this is for a nineteen ninety-three Mustang. And it's a three wire and all you got to do is just snip the wires and connect them and that's what i did the last time i looked it up i bought it on amazon 19 dollars no brainer you know uh i replaced this one in 2018 with this exact same one no problems you know if you got a problem with it with it your check engine lights gotta just go off man this thing is hooked up to the to that system if something goes wrong man boom and it'll probably trigger the check engine light when i first install it until it gets warmed up and you know the computer recognizes it or whatever anyway so um <coughs> i'm not sure what to do about this i don't know if i want to take it apart um i don't know i don't see a rip in the diaphragm Hold on, let's take this and look at it in the sunlight. Let there be light. I'll have to look in there. Where is it? There. So it's a valve, right? So that whole thing goes up and down. And as I said, there's a lot of uh, different issues when this goes bad. You get check engine light. The car runs horrible. It stalls out. Um, you get bad gas mileage. That's what we're working on here. You know, my son, um, he had filled his tank up about $85 worth of premium. I think he got 15 gallons. He filled it up. The, the tanks hold uh, 18.5 gallons. Um, he just uh, got down to the uh, empty mark. I don't know, two days ago. You know, he had reset his uh, odometer when he filled it up. And it's at 173 miles. By the time I foam a full tank all the way down to the empty 173 miles 
And if you do the calculation of uh, the tank, 18.5, and I'd say they are supposed to get around 16 miles per gallon in the city, you should get about 296 or 293, 296 miles out of a tank, and he got 173, so that is pretty bad now. I don't know if, you know, it's a 30-year-old car, but it's, um, it's, you know, it's been well taken care of. I just, uh, you know, did the head gasket last summer, and the head looked good, and it was straight. We did cooling system, all tuna parts have been replaced. Um, I took the duty cycle for the fuel mixture. EHA valve has been replaced. All the spark plugs. Um, you know, so so that's, that's one thing. Another thing I'm going to do is I'm going to pull the air cleaner off today and we're going to check out that, uh, that val um, the throttle switch. If it's bad, it might, the computer, the CSI computer might be thinking that it's at full throttle all the time and it's feeding too much fuel, you know, whatever. So I'm going to keep working. You know, check this out. I've been messing with it. So at first I uh, took some carb cleaner and uh, put it down this hole right here. You can see with a flashlight, you can see that needle, whatever it is. I think it starts with a P, some weird name they gave it. And I cleaned it all out and then it started, the pressure started getting a little bit better. Now look at it. Hell yeah. And then um, it was better, still wasn't holding real good. It was going up, but then it was going down. Then I took some uh, heavy duty silicon and I sprayed it in here, a bunch of it, all around the diaphragm. And now it uh, seems to be holding a lot. It's still going down, but you know what? It's okay. It's okay with me if it just holds. Yeah. It'll eventually go down, but um sweet because see i don't want to you don't want to spend like 800 dollars on one of those unless you're super wealthy and you don't care um if you can even find it um but it did pass emissions you know um let's see oh let's take a look at this where is it where is it where is it over here So here are the, from uh, three months ago, here's the results of the mission testing. This first one doesn't mean anything. That doesn't, that doesn't um, pass or fail you this here. It's these two right here that are the big ones. So uh, hydrocarbons. Let's see, this is the uh, max. That's allowed. Average is 29. Ours was five. That's really good. Um, that's at uh, idle. And then at 2,500 RPM, 140 is the maximum parts per million, right? Average is 20. Ours was at four. The CO max 1.0 on both of them. Max would be 1.0, right? Uh, yeah, right here, right there. And ours is zero. So, you know, <laughs> that's pretty crazy. So, uh, some people say, hey, if the car runs good and it passed emission, don't mess with that, with that valve, you know. Um, I think I'm going to put it back on there. I can see that it's holding a little bit, you know, and, um, not a hundred, you know, I've never worked on these EGR systems. I mean, who does? 
unless you fail fail emissions. Um, I think I'm gonna put it back together and work on the O2 sensor. I don't see how that this part would give you bad gas mileage if it's not working right. I don't understand that. The only thing I could find was that it uh, it cools. It helps cool because it's circulating. You know, it helps cool the cylinder temperature. You know. And one, one symptom of a bad one also is your, your car gets really hot, you know. So, you know, that's, that's another thing. I mean, then there's like, oh, a cold start. I mean, there's all, this, all these symptoms, you know, still trying to figure it all out. But anyways, okay, you can look at this up yourself if you're interested. But I always want to know what things do. So, so it's an EGR valve. It's the main component that the EGR system is normally closed like mine. It connects the exhaust manifold to the intake manifold and is controlled either by a vacuum or built-in step motor. It's that The function of the EGR valve is to control the flow of exhaust gas being recirculating depending on the engine load. Um, the EGR system works by returning a small portion of exhaust gas to the engine's combustion chambers through the intake manifold, lowering combustion temperatures and therefore reducing the amount of the NOx emitted. It's like smog. You know, how does it work? Oh God, I don't even want to know. Problems with the valve. Oh. Frequent problem with EGR valve is sticking due to buildup of carbon deposits. Some can be completely blocked. Now there's also, there's that tube. Um, well, let's see. I should run a, run a coat hanger down it and see if it's clear. This tube right here, that's what connects to the EGR and it snakes all around and somewhere on the other side, it, it goes into the intake uh, manifold. And they say that those things can get blocked up and the procedure for cleaning that out, which is really weird because you can't really take it off without taking a bunch of, you know, other stuff apart, is you undo the other end and then you get a speedometer cable. <laughs> a speedometer cable that's all kind of messed up on one end and put on a drill motor and snake it through like a roto rooter like you would in, you know, plug up plumbing pipe and get it to go throughout the other side so see what happens huh I don't think I can do this but this is the tube here right and I want to see if it's clear all the way through um, I can get a wire through it but not you know not all the way and then it wraps around this side of the engine and it's right down there Okay, come on, phone. And it goes like this. Then I lift with a mirror. That's right down at the bottom, down in here. And it goes here. And then it connects somewhere under the manifold, like where you can't even reach it. So. Can't, can't, I can't get to it without either taking the manifold off or maybe when I have the car jacked up next time, I'm going to look up and see if, I don't know how you'd get to it, you know, um, without taking the manifold off. But um, I'll wait. I'll do these other repairs. I'm going to test this switch right now. Then. Here's something else I thought of as far as gas mileage that sucks. During the summertime here, and it hits 90 degrees every day during the summer for three months. And this car likes to overheat, and that's why we did the entire cooling system. I mean, every part of it. And got it to run a little bit cooler. I also put a, uh, a lower thermostat that opens up at 78, 
Celsius instead of 87. And I put a resistor. Right, right there to fool the, uh, the temperature sensor, the coolant temperature sensor so that the fans come on earlier. It does all that. It runs great during the summer now. You know, it doesn't overheat. But now that it's, we're in winter, and he's noticing the gas mileage is bad, could it be that the engine is running too cold? Um, I had somebody mention it in my previous MPG video. Um, I'm going to try to run it this weekend here and try to see how hot it, it really gets. But uh, the last time I was doing it, driving around, it was at the 80 mark. Ideally, it should be about the 80, 85 mark or 90 mark, 85. I think it's something like that. But um, it's the mark after the 80. It's like the sweet spot. Um, so that could be something too, you know. And... You know, looking up stuff uh, on the internet. Uh, so cold weather and winter driving conditions can sig significantly reduce fuel economy. Fuel tests show that city driving in a conventional gas car is roughly 15% lower at 20 degrees Fahrenheit. It doesn't get that cold here. I think it might be, it might, you know, 37 degrees. And it's been pretty cold here lately here in Southern California, a lot of rain and, you know, uh, you get the best fuel mileage with a car when it's running at, or the best performance, you know, everything when it's running, you know, hot, everything's warm, it's more efficient. So it's one other thought. Anyways, so looking at instructions on the internet, Maybe I got a different setup than everybody else, but I've got it set up like that. And then I got uh, I get the connection. Micro switch opens up. It stops. Um, I know that uh, one guy was saying that the middle one is ground. And uh, I don't know about that. If it was ground, well, there's a that brown wire right there. Doesn't look like there's. See that center? It doesn't look like there's anything in it. There's no. You know. Supposedly. Two. Is ground so. I know that uh, when I uh, put the probes and tested this right here, oh my gosh, my back, my back will never be the same. Let's see, let's get, uh, let's get this one and let's make it a ground. Hopefully that's a ground. And then get, uh, get this one. Uh, different. It's easy to get confused. Oh, it's off. Okay. Okay. So this one is not a ground. This one. So that's a ground. So this must just be a real simple one, you know. Um, the middle one does nothing. There's only two wires here anyways. So you gotta be careful when you're looking stuff up on, on YouTube. This is how you test it. That one guy. It just goes like that. So I feel confident that, that that's working. Um, if it wasn't, then we wouldn't be getting uh, 
we wouldn't be getting a signal. Might as well give it a little, little lube. Hard to get to. It's kind of dirty. Okay, I think I'm going to put it back together. Don't forget to put this thing back in there. Okay, let's do it. Let's give it a test fire. I think I need to order a new uh, gasket for the EGR. Yeah. Okay, O2 sensor. First thing you gotta do is get the carpet out. Amazing the quality of Mercedes back in the day. Okay, so yeah, what a nightmare this is, huh? This is from a stereo that used to be in this car that somebody took out. So if I'm not mistaken, this right here is a lead. Do that. If it doesn't dry. O2 right here. I should just cut this stuff out. It doesn't, I'll just leave it in there. Who knows where it goes to? I think it goes to the back. Um, yeah, I think this. that blue line disappearing under there. Oh my god. I thought there was an access box. This is heater. Oh, I'll have to go look at instructions. I could have sworn it was right here and it was easy to get to, but oh well. Okay. So Three wire. Okay, let's go look up instructions. Okay, on this one, we gotta jack the car up. God, I swear, I thought it was like under the passenger right there, but now the exhaust is kind of like in the middle. So, jack it up, jack stands, lock the wheels, put the emergency brake on. And then we have to take that blue wire and shove it through that hole, disconnect the wiring, 
There's a rubber grommet in there. And that's all gotta be uh, pushed out. <sighs> Got it out. Not too bad. Just took two, you know, turns of the wrench. It was loose. So there it is. So these can go bad. They, I mean, they, they just start getting <clears throat> bad in age. And I was reading um, this uh, guy. Uh, what's his name? Uh, Pierre Head Headery on YouTube. It's real good. Mercedes mechanic, old school. And he has a whole write up on the, you know, video on these sensors and they can affect your mileage. You get poor gas mileage even though they still work, but we'll see what happens. Um, now just to uh, splice the wires. So it's just a matter of uh, cutting off the uh, the Ford connector. It's really not gonna do much of anything for anybody. Um, cut the old one apart. This is just gonna go like that. There'll be a connection right here like that. So um, I think what, I, and then this thing, you can't forget this, this, uh, donut gasket whatever rubber thingy um <clears throat> if we could put that on but i think what i'm going to do first is get this in like that because it's really a pain when you got all this stuff and all of it has to turn with it when you're turning it in and it just gets god it gets in the way and it hangs up and stuff I think short, the shorter the better like this to get it in there and tighten it up and then put all this stuff on it. I think that's what we're gonna do. Okay, it's somewhere right there. Find the hole. Get it to turn. Around. Hopefully this makes it a lot easier. <laughs> in there I just got to push the, the sheath through just keep this keep this away from the drive shaft you don't want it to be too long right here it's got to clear let's see got it all heat shrunk back in its little home here uh, 
Um, and just, uh, I remember this thing drove me nuts last time. What's it going to? Well, we're still waiting for it to warm up, but you see that duty cycle. It's way down, way down. So we'll try to warm the car up and then check it again. So that new O2 sensor, I think uh, we're gonna have to readjust, we'll see. All right, I just went for a test drive and it seems to run okay, no check engine lights. Let's go check the duty cycle, we're about So these warm, they should be about, right about the 85. Um, but it's pretty cold out. You know, I'm gonna let it sit there and run some more. Sometimes if you turn the AC on, that'll bring the temperatures up, but let's just go check it out. Well, it runs okay. Duty cycle should be, you know, working out. I mean, <clears throat> once it's warmed up. Let's see. Number two. Number three. No, well, okay. It's a little rich, huh? Okay, yeah, I shut the car off. It was stuck at 80. Shut the car off for a little while. Let it reset. Now it's back. about where you want it at so that job's done and let's see how his fuel mileage is <laughs> I can hear that exhaust leak at the EGR it drives me crazy I might have one of those gaskets moving around. Yeah, I think we're I think we're good. I'm done for today. So, uh, what did we do today? So we checked the EGR valve. We know it's it's kind of bad. It kind of holds a little bit, but it goes down. We know that that valve goes up and down. It's always, you know, you want it to be in the down position. Because if it's in the up position, then your engine's gonna run, run really funny though open so closed is good um we'll keep our eyes peeled at first for a replacement just for the heck of it we check the uh, throttle position switch that thing checked out all the hoses look good um he's got a full tank of gas and uh the odometer is at six miles so we'll see if he gets better gas mileage like this and if he does i'll update this video okay